Hello, I'm Yvonne C. Turner with Delight. Welcome to the second in our corporate video lecture series. On today's video, we hear from Aaron Diederich, Director of Corporate Citizenship at NetSuite.org, the corporate citizenship arm of Bay Area company NetSuite. Aaron will guide us through how to organize a hackathon, a very popular type of pro bono program where pro projects are scoped to be completed in a really short amount of time, typically a day. It's amazing the kinds of deliverables pro bono volunteers can create in such a short amount of time, from websites to new logos and marketing materials, even PSAs. And research shows that this type of volunteering can have a positive impact on employees' professional development and overall engagement at work. And we've also seen the tremendous value that skilled volunteer support and professional services can have on nonprofits. So Aaron is going to tell us about how NetSuite has done hackathons and about how you can hack it too. Over to you, Erin. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, I'm so excited to be here today and to be sharing information about what NetSuite has done with our hackathons and about hackathons in general. So um, I have a few slides that I'm going to share with everybody so that I can take you through what our hackathon was and um, some kind of tips about how you could plan your own hackathon. So let me just share that out. Great. So as Yvonne said, you know, pro bono can take all different kinds of, um, can be made in all different kinds of events. And what I really like are marathon style events because you get to do a lot of work in a short amount of time. When I came over to NetSuite, I was really excited to start getting involved with hackathons because I always hear about tech companies getting involved in hackathons. And I wasn't exactly sure how they worked and what went into planning one. So let's just start out with a little 101. What is a hackathon? Um, you probably have heard the term all the time. You don't really know what it means. Um, it really just means an event where computer programmers are going to come together for a specific period of time. Often it's a weekend, sometimes it's just one day, and they're going to work on some challenges that um, have been posed to them. Now, those challenges can cover a wide range of issues. They could be about a subject matter, like you're seeing here, the food hackathon. They could be about um, a specific city. They could be about a specific company. They could be trying to serve a specific cause. Hackathons are really um, flexible because you can make a hackathon about anything. Um, it's really just the tool for you to get the people together and for them to work collaboratively to come up with solutions. The other important things to remember about a hackathon are that it's an event. So when you're planning a hackathon, it should be fun. You should be thinking about things like how to make the experience really good for everybody who's participating. Um, it's a competition. So there's got to be a little bit of fun. Um, you know, we're all working together for the common good, but there's going to be a winner and there are going to be some prizes. Um, and of course, it's pro bono. And I think a lot of people forget that it's pro bono, but it's a great way to get your employees or your constituents to do some pro bono in a short amount of time. So I'm going to cover um, some of these topics in our chat today. And I'm going to use the NetSuite Hackathon for Good as um, an example and take you through that hackathon so that you can really kind of understand what goes into planning and executing the hackathon. So the NetSuite Hackathon for Good um, is the event that we kicked off last year in 2014. We've now done it twice, and we're already in the midst of starting to think about our third one. It's tied to our Sweet World Conference, which is our global customer conference where we have you know, over 7,000 people coming from all over the world to spend the week um, talking about what's going on with NetSuite. And we think that that's a really exciting time to also add in some volunteerism. And what a better way to do that than to do a hackathon. So we do it as the kind of pre-conference day. And we invite both our customers, so our for-profit customers, and our employees and our technology partners who are NetSuite experts. Um, something that's different about our hackathon from some others is that our hackathon is all about the NetSuite technology. So everyone's hacking these challenges on NetSuite, um, which is a platform, a software platform, versus some hackathons, it might be product agnostic and you could use any product, or it might be all about building apps. So hackathons are really flexible. Um, as I've said, because you can make them kind of whatever you need them to be. And for us, we really wanted to do a NetSuite-based hackathon so that we could serve some of our charities who are using our software. 
So when you start thinking about how to plan a hackathon, it's really important to think about, you know, the big four W's. Um, who do you want to participate in this hackathon? You know, is it that you really want to get college students to participate? Do you want to get your employees to participate? Is it going to be open to the public and anyone in the developer community can come? It's important to think about that because you want to make sure that you are creating an event that works for the audience that you're targeting. Um, you want to think about the what, obviously. You know, what do you want your hackathon to be about? What do you want the technology to be? Um, you want to think about a place. You need an event space where people can come together and collaboratively work. We've done ours in a convention center um, because it's tied to our big convention, but you could do it in your office if you have a big enough space where people could really get together around tables and work. Um, and then you want to think about when. And for a lot of people, they do hackathons over the weekend and they'll kick them off on a Friday and then give people all day Saturday to work and then Sunday the presentations happen. Um, that works out well if you're targeting people who you know, aren't just your employees, but come from other companies or have other day jobs and you want them to feel like they don't have to leave work in order to participate. But if you're just targeting your own employees, I think it's pretty easy to run your event during uh, work hours and you could maybe do, you know, a Thursday night kickoff and then all day Friday work and then culminate at the end of Friday. You want to think about who this hackathon is serving. Um, and hackathons aren't always about uh, social impact, although they really are, um, I think, more fun when they are because everybody really gets passionate about helping solve a challenge. But they could certainly be, you know, helping come up with a solution for something um, within your business that isn't necessarily tied to a charity. But for the purposes of today, let's say it's going to be about a charity or a cause. Um, so you want to think about who that charity is, who that cause is. Maybe this is your place to tie this into the rest of your CSR program and go out to some of your existing partners and ask them if they have a business challenge that they are looking for a technology solution to and start really thinking about does that challenge fit the constructs of a hackathon? You know, could people put together a quick prototype of a solution in a short amount of time for what that, that challenge is? Another way to go about it is to pick um, you know, a, an impact area or a cause. Maybe you want your hackathon to be about water and you're gonna invite multiple water nonprofits to pose their problems, or you're just gonna lay out some of the challenges that face the water nonprofit industry that technology could solve and have people solve to those problems. As with any good event, you want to think through all your logistical details, make sure the space is ready for everybody, make sure that you've got, you know, lots of lots and lots and lots of power strips for everybody to plug in their computers, really strong Wi-Fi. You want to have good food throughout the whole time because food matters. People are there for a long time and they're really excited. Um, and it's even better if you're, you're feeding them and making them feel like they're really welcome at this event. Another thing to think about is a facilitator. And there are a large number of incredible organizations who facilitate hackathons um, and who you can bring on board to really help you not only figure out you know, what the challenge is gonna be, but run the day of the event if it feels like it's a little bit outside of your wheelhouse. Um, we've done that with our hackathon for good and have felt like it was really helpful for our first two times to have a facilitator partnering with us. So then you kind of know what the event's going to look like, who it's going to target, and when it's going to happen. And it's time to do all of your marketing and communications. Um, and the important thing, you know, one of the most important things about a hackathon is getting people to sign up. I guess as with any volunteer event, you can plan a great event, but if nobody comes, it's not going to be successful. Um, so you really need to think about that strategy of announcing the event, you know, targeting specific groups of employees to get them to sign up, reaching out to executives and getting them to endorse the event so that employees will really start signing up and you'll get a big group of folks together and ready for the event. Um, you know, I always think it's important to do branding and to come up with, you know, a logo or a cool poster for all of these events because that makes people feel like it's something that they want to participate in. Um, and it's easier to promote something when there's something kind of cool and fun to look at versus just, you know, sending out an email saying, we're doing a hackathon, we hope you join us. Um, before the event happens, it's important that you prepare some materials for the participants so that they can start getting up to speed. Uh, for us, we call those challenge briefs, and we put together a couple page brief about each of the charity challenges, outlining you know what's happening, what the challenges are, what they're hoping to overcome, and we send that out to everybody a few days in advance so that they can start to get the wheels turning. Not that they can start working on it, but that they can start thinking about 
what they would need to do at the event and, and really get them excited about the possibilities. Um, you want to secure your judges because, again, it is a competition. Um, for us, we have the um, we've had the chance to have our founder of our company and our chief technology officer serve as a judge every year, which has been awesome. And our participants have said that they love knowing that they're going to present to the founder of our company. Um, we've also had our head of product um, participate as a judge. We have our head of our CSR team, who's also a nonprofit technology technologists participate, and we have a judge from each of our charities so that they can really help choose the winning solution for their challenge. And you want to think about prizes, and you can be really fun with prizes and get creative. Um, it's up to you. And then, of course, it's the day of the event. You execute it, and you want to just make sure that it's a fun day and that you're really helping everybody bring camaraderie and spirit to what they're doing. Um, and then one of the most important things about hackathons, and I think one of the, the places that they get sometimes a bad rap is afterwards because you've created this great thing. It's obviously not going to be you know, plugged in and used the next day. There is some follow-up that would have to happen. And sometimes that follow-up doesn't happen from hackathons. So I think it's important to have a plan in place of what's gonna happen with the winning solution. How are you gonna put it in place for the charity and support them and keep the momentum going so that you know the full pro bono project is really put in place. So here are just a few images from our hackathon. You know, as you can imagine, Visually, it's people sitting around tables working on computers. It's important to have whiteboards and places for them to really think and get creative. But you don't need a super fancy space in order to throw a hackathon. And everybody brings their own computers. So from a technology perspective, all you really need are those amazing power strips and some internet connections. Um, our schedule uh, went, you know, as you can see on the slide, in the morning we do a really cool introduction where both of the charities get up and give kind of five minute pitches to the audience and say, work with me, you know, come and help with my challenge. Um, and then after that, our teams actually form on the spot. So we stand up on stage and we say, okay, you just heard about two great challenges. If you work, wanna work on challenge A, go to the left-hand side of the room. If you wanna work on challenge B, go to the right-hand side of the room. And then once everybody's divided up, they start bundling up into little teams. And we really encourage everyone to work with people who they didn't walk in the front door with that day or who they don't know very well. Um, for us, since we're involving customers and our employees and our technology partners, it's really exciting to see those groups start bundling up together and you see a customer with an employee, with a partner, and they've never met before and they're having a really good time and building great relationships, which is, I think, a really good benefit of all pro bono work, but especially of a hackathon. So encourage people to mix it up, to get on teams with people that they aren't familiar with. Um, and it's this is always a part that I think is a little nerve wracking as an event planner, because I'm like, what if they don't form the right teams? But they do, They all it all gets figured out. It, you know, Over the course of a half hour, everybody all of a sudden is heads down working and brainstorming. So it really works out um, quite easily. And you just help kind of make those matches happen. So then they work all day and the charities are there to provide feedback and answer questions and help brainstorm with them. And then at the end of the night, we do our presentations and each team gets five minutes and their presentation includes um, a little bit of a demo of what they created. And then we announce our winners. Um, and one of the things that, that's that been really exciting about our hackathon is that, um, as you can see in this, this image in the lower right hand corner, our founder, Evan Goldberg, has announced our hackathon and given a recap of what's happened during his keynote at our conference. So he is standing on a stage in front of you know, 7,000 people in that room talking about the hackathon and talking about our charity partners and really putting in a plug for using your skills for good to that entire audience. Um, so that's been something that we've loved that's happened from this event. And it's important as you're planning your event to think about, you know, how are you gonna promote it outside of just the participants, but to other people to help them understand that they could be using their tech skills for good in the same way. So just a quick rundown of who won this year. We had two winners, one for Good360. This team, you could, they always come up with fun names. This team's name was Empty Landfills because the challenge was all about how to keep all of those in-kind donations that people um, send at disaster times out of landfills because right now 60% of them are going in. Um, and they used all sorts of GPS and locations and created a really cool disaster recovery kind of um, 
you know, data center inside NetSuite where all of the people involved in the disaster would go. And they jokingly, because there has to be some fun in a hackathon, they named their fake disaster a zombie epidemic. So their whole little pitch was about what if zombies came, which was very humorous and everybody really liked it. And it's a good reminder that there, there should be some levity and some humor in pro bono all the time. And then our next team was Team Sweet Avengers, who helped out with our Found Animals team. And Found Animals had um, been growing just at great, great, great speeds, and were having lots and lots of processes that they were doing manually that were really prohibiting them from reaching the number of um, animal lives that they could save that they wanted to. And they felt like they needed a lot of um, things to be put in place to help automate their systems so that they could do more mission-based work. So this team did a lot of great work for them and they're actually still working together right now. Um, I just heard from them that they're, they're building out all sorts of things together as a team, which is awesome. So, you know, you, you probably know about the social impact benefits of a hackathon. You can perceive that pretty easily. You know, you're taking a challenge that a charity has and you're solving it for them using technology. Um, but there are lots of other positive benefits that come out of running a hackathon event, just like I think come out of almost any pro bono event. So there's great camaraderie. Um, and one of the things that I just love is seeing people meet and form connections. And then now that we've run the event twice, we've seen people coming back to the event the second year and kind of, you know, being reunited with the people they met the year before and being so excited about working together again. Everybody's learning new skills because you're working in a very um, pressure cooker situation. And so everybody has to kind of say, this is what I know how to do. Who knows how to do this? Who can teach me how to do that? And then figure out a way to get it done quickly. And I think that you really stretch yourself when you're under a deadline. Um, we see that from creative marathons, like the create-a-thon model as well. You push yourself outside your comfort limit and it's really impressive what you're able to do in a short amount of time. Um, there's also all sorts of innovations that come out of hackathons, not just for the charity partners, but it might you know, create an innovation that could be used for other charities. So it's an exciting way to kind of come up with new ideas. And finally, everybody who participates in a hackathon, whether they know it or not, has now done pro bono for probably 12 to 24 hours. So it's a great way for all of us who are really trying to champion the pro bono movement to get more people involved in pro bono and get them figuring out how they can use their skills for good. So um, as with any good event, you always want to survey at the end. And so we did a survey of our participants to find out all sorts of stuff about how they felt about the event. And some of the things that we learned um, were, you know, we asked them, did you learn something new? Did you enjoy working with new people? Did you learn about NetSuite's commitment to social responsibility? And did this make you realize that you can use your skills for good? Um, and as you can see, hopefully you can see on this graph, the light colored blue is strongly agree, the medium blue is somewhat agree, and the dark blue is do not agree. So the middle two don't even have any do not agree. Um, and the other ones, you know, everything is basically 80% saying that they agree with these um, with each of these statements. So that's great. You know, it's great to see that 70% of our attendees really learned about the company's commitment to social responsibility through their participation because now we've we've given people more awareness about what we're doing. And it's amazing to see that, you know, nearly 90% of the participants now are realizing that they can put their skills to good use because of their participation in, in a hackathon, which really was just a 12 day or a 12 hour event. So I always like to balance the good with the, you know, watch out, there could be some red flags. And when we planned our first hackathon, the four things that were the most challenging and that um, I wasn't expecting going into it were these four, four categories. So I wanted to put them out here so that we could all just be on, you know, as you go into planning your hackathon, you might think about these and just make sure that you've given yourself enough time to really figure them out. So the first was working with our legal team and just coming up with the competition rules and deciding you know, how we wanted to handle the IP that was created out of the event because it was gonna involve not only employees, but customers. If you're doing just an employee event, this probably would be a much easier thing, but it was something we really had to nuance and figure out um, what would work for us. Um, the second challenge was really finding the charity that had the right business 
problem that we could solve in this short amount of time. You know, you don't want to pick something that's so big that none of the teams are going to feel like they can solve for that challenge. And you don't want to pick something that's so small that everybody comes up with the exact, exact same solution. And then it's, it's not really as creative or fun. So each year that we've run the event, I've said that I would think that that's one of the most tricky parts is figuring out exactly what the challenges that you want to have the event be um, for and who you want it to support and just making sure that that's the right mix of, you know, easy to solve, but creative and innovative um, and something that will get people excited to participate. Um, the third piece was costs. I was kind of uh, going into this thinking, I don't know, there might not be that very many costs associated with running a hackathon, it's just 12 hours. But with any event, you know, there's catering and t-shirts and, you know, badges and for us we brought on a facilitator and a photographer and a videographer so there were some costs associated but all in all it's a pretty affordable way to do pro bono um, and then finally you know a big challenge for a lot of hackathons is that follow-up how do you take what happened at the event and make sure that you you really fulfill that work for the charity and so it's just good to talk about that throughout your whole planning process and have a plan in place to figure out how that part's going to work I hope you guys all have been inspired from this to think about how you could use a hackathon as a model for pro bono to both engage your employees and other constituents or maybe even bring them together like we've done. Um, you know, as I've said, it's a really fun way to do a lot of pro bono in a short amount of time. And it's always exciting to have pro bono happen in an event setting because people can come and visit it and actually see it happening. Whereas a lot of pro bono that our company does year long is happening you know, on people's computers at their desk or in meetings and it's harder for people to actually come and watch it. So this is a fun event style of pro bono. Um, and if you're feeling like I'm interested in hackathons, but creating my own seems very daunting and I don't have the bandwidth to do it. You could always think about sponsoring a hackathon. If you Google hackathon in your city, I promise you, you will find lots of hackathons that are already happening. Um, and it might be the easiest thing for you to do, just sponsor a hackathon, maybe have an executive be a judge, maybe you know find a hackathon and encourage your employees to participate in it that you don't even run, but that's third party. So there's lots of ways you can get involved in the hackathon movement without planning and executing your own hackathon each time. So um, I'm going to turn it back to you, Yvonne. Thank you so much, Erin, for that really engaging and informative presentation. I have just a couple of questions for you before you before we close. Uh, so, what are you going to do the hackathon model for other challenges here, like generating or more team-based consulting projects? So. The rest of the year, NetSuite does small team-based projects, and we decided that we wanted to move from a team-based model to the hackathon model um, because we wanted to do something that could take place in a single day. So we're still doing those team-based projects throughout the course of the year, but this is kind of the cherry on the top for us with Pro Bono, and it allows people who might not be able to take on a project that takes place over a couple months to say, hey, but I could block out one day and I could definitely get engaged. So I think it kind of targets a different population and helps us get more employees engaged in Pro Bono. Great. And you know, we've seen research lately sharing that the real drivers behind what motivates employees to volunteer and service are offering those social opportunities and, and uh, opportunities for skill development or career advancement. And then you shared some post-event data with us already, but I'm wondering, have you seen this played out uh, at, the, at NetSuite's hackathons in terms of what are, are you sensing that employees are uh, participating because they really like that social aspect or are they more interested in building new skills or applying their skills for social good? I think that um, our employees are both excited about using their skills for good and are excited about having a purpose-based uh, component of their job. And you know, when you think about what everybody does in their day in, their day out, um, some days they might not feel like they have 100% purpose in what they're doing. And so to be able to kind of clear the books, block out the calendar for a day, and have you know one mission for that day, and that mission is to help another charity and to use my skills, and it makes me feel really connected to the brand and the company and my fellow employees and I feel like I was able to do something really good 
in one day, I think that that's, that's the driver. People get really excited about that opportunity. Um, and it's always nice to be able to, you know, for us, since we do it with our customer conference, it's a really busy week for our employees. They have so much going on and it's a really exciting week. And so to kick off that week by them doing, you know, 12 hours of pro bono service and having a competition is a really cool way to have them connect even deeper with the company and with each other. Great. Well, thank you so much, Erin, again, and good luck with your future hackathons. Uh, that wraps up this video. For more information uh, and resources on employee volunteering, visit our website at www.pointsoflight.org and click the Four Companies tab at the top and stay tuned for our next webinar in the series, which will uh, be focused on virtual volunteering. So until next time, thanks for joining. Thanks.